Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we will be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Alibaba Group, ticker symbol BABA. Alibaba and other Chinese tech giants have been in the news over the past year and a half due to the Chinese regulatory crackdown on internet businesses. Alibaba is famously a portfolio holding for a number of esteemed value investors, including Charlie Munger, Guy Spear, formerly Manish Prabhai, and Greg Alexander of Conifer Capital. So with some of the press coverage that Alibaba's gotten, it's sometimes hard to distinguish the signal from the noise. So by taking a look at the business's actual financials and understanding their fundamentals, hopefully this helps to provide a clearer picture of Alibaba. So at the time of recording this video, Alibaba is down to just over $90 a share. Over the past year, they're down 60%, and Alibaba is only up 8% since its IPO in 2014. Over this time period, they've returned a 1% compounded annual return. Alibaba's all-time high came in October of 2020 at just over $300 a share, and as we can see, that's been cut by two-thirds as they're trading at $90 right now. So with that, Alibaba is down significantly from its 52-week high, and they're about $17 over their 52-week low. Even with this cut down, Alibaba is a huge company and a very big business. They have a $254 billion market cap. To provide some context for our analysis, let's talk about the business. Alibaba Group Holding Limited, through its subsidiaries, provides technology infrastructure and marketing reach to merchants, brands, retailers, and other businesses to engage with their users and customers in the People's Republic of China and internationally. It operates through four segments, core commerce, cloud computing, digital media, and entertainment and innovative initiatives, plus others. Alibaba is the world's largest online and mobile commerce company, as measured by gross merchandise volume. Their gross merchandise volume was 7.5 trillion won for the fiscal year ending March 2021. It operates China's online marketplaces, including Taobao, which is consumer to consumer, and Tmall, which is business to consumer. Alibaba's Chinese commerce retail division accounted for 63% of their revenue in the final quarter of 2021. Additional revenue sources include Chinese commerce wholesale, international retail slash wholesale, cloud computing, digital media and entertainment platforms, Kainal Logistics Services, and their innovation and other initiatives. The company was incorporated in 1999 and is based in Hangzhou, the People's Republic of China. Its founder and longtime CEO and chairman, Jack Ma, got into hot water for criticizing the Chinese banking system, famously leading to the cancelization of Ant Financial's IPO in November 2020. As a fun fact about Alibaba, Alibaba's current chairman, Joe Tsai, is the owner of the Brooklyn Nets. So to get us into the right mindset of a value investor, let's remind ourselves of the four principles of value investing. Principle number one, when you're buying a share of stock, you're not buying a piece of paper and you're not buying a number that goes up and down on a chart. You're buying a fractional ownership percentage of a business and you should treat it as if you're buying the entire business. Principle number two, sufficient margin of safety. Every business is worth the sum of all the future cash that they'll generate from now until judgment day, discounted by some reasonable interest rate. If you can figure out what this value is, then you should pay a price well below it. Principle number three, your job as a value investor is to take advantage of Mr. Market. Mr. Market is constantly serving up stock quotes, and sometimes the quotes he gives us are too high, other times they're too low. When they're too low, we should be buying from him, and when they're too high, we should consider selling. And value investing principle number four, circle of competence. As investors, we don't deserve to make money from anything that we can't understand. We want to stay within our circle of competence to minimize mistakes and build conviction to stay with businesses over the long run. To ask the question, is this business within my circle of competence, is to partially answer the question. With those principles in mind, let's dive right into it and look at Alibaba's financials. We'll be performing an eight-pillar fundamental analysis as popularized by Everything Money. Starting off with pillar number one, we want Alibaba's average five-year PE to be below 22 and a half. Currently, they're trading at a PE of 24, and over the past five years, their PE has averaged out at about 36. So this first pillar is going to be an X. Pillar number two, we want their average five-year return on capital to be above 9%. Alibaba has done a good job here of maintaining returns on capital that are in the high single digits to low double digits. Averaged out, their five-year return on capital is just under 10%. So this is our first check. Pillar number three, we want to see five-year revenue growth. 
So even though Alibaba is a Chinese company, these numbers are displayed in US dollars. And here we can see that they've knocked it out of the park in terms of revenue growth. In 2017, they had just under $23 billion of revenue, and they grew that to just under $110 billion of revenue in 2021. So they've almost 5x their revenue in five years. This is a huge check. Pillar number four, we want to see five-year net income growth. Similar to pillar number three, this is another huge check. They grew net income from $6.3 billion in 2017 all the way to just under $23 billion in 2021. Another massive check on pillar number four. Alibaba has grown like crazy in the last five years. Next for pillar number five, we want to see decreasing shares outstanding. Dilution is a silent killer to investors, so we want to be mindful to avoid it. In 2017, Alibaba had just under 2.6 billion shares outstanding, and that slightly increased to just over 2.7 billion shares outstanding in 2021. So this is slight dilution. It's not terrible, but we don't want to see it. So this pillar is still going to be an X. One thing to make note of is that Alibaba did announce a share buyback program. And with their stock having fallen so much in the recent year, it means that they're going to be able to get more shares for their money. Next for pillar number six, we want to see five year free cash flow growth. So free cash flow is cash from operations minus capital expenditures. In 2017, Alibaba had about $10 billion of free cash flow, and they grew this to about $29 billion in 2021. So they've about tripled their free cash flow over this time period. In 2020, they had $21 billion of free cash flow. In 2019, they had $17 billion. And in 2018, they also had $17 billion. So in an average year over the last five, Alibaba has about $19 billion of free cash flow. They are generating a ton of money. There are only a handful of companies in the world generating this much free cash flow in absolute terms. Next, for pillar number seven, we want to see how the business is using leverage. So we want their net debt to be below their five-year average free cash flow multiplied by five. Net debt is long and short-term debt minus cash and cash equivalents. So we can see here that Alibaba has a negative net debt of $46 billion. What this means is that after paying off all their long and short-term liabilities, Alibaba is still left with $46 billion of cash and cash equivalents on their balance sheet. This means that they have a very solid financial cushion. So with $46 billion in cash, Pillar 7 is a massive check. Finally, the big pillar of them all, Pillar number 8, we're comparing Alibaba's market cap to its free cash flow yield. We want their market cap to be below their 5-year average free cash flow multiplied by 20. So currently, Alibaba has a market cap of about $254 billion, so a quarter of a trillion. Multiplying their $19 billion of free cash flow times 20 brings us to $380 billion. That's about $140 billion more than their current market cap. So that's another big check on pillar number eight. Based on their free cash flow profile and with 20 as a starting point, Alibaba is generating a ton of cash. So to summarize, Alibaba checks the box on six out of eight pillars. They've experienced huge growth, they've had lots of cash, and they have very big cash flows. Their only excess came from a higher PE and slight dilution. But fundamentally, Alibaba is looking very solid. As for next steps, I highly encourage you to check out the company's filings and learn more about Alibaba. Just because their fundamentals have such a strong showing doesn't mean that you should jump into Alibaba as an investment. It instead means that you should do your homework. Realistically, you want to understand where Alibaba's cash flows are going to be at a reasonable level about 10 years from now. That's it for our stock analysis of Alibaba, ticker symbol BABA. Alibaba is also traded on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange under ticker symbol 9988. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next. There are a lot of great Chinese companies trading at attractive multiples right now. Thanks for learning about Alibaba and have a great day.